Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, great beer friends all over the world. I welcome you to this program. Welcome to this program. Welcome. While you are joining us on Facebook at Judge Money Blog slash TV at Judge Money Blog official at Judge Money Blog. Share the video, like the video, and follow the page. If you are watching on YouTube at Judge Money Block Africa, continue to subscribe, like the video for the algorithm to do the sharing. And we are live, we are live and direct. We are live and direct. We are going to have a very, very quick one again. You know, it is very, very important that when matter arises, we address them accordingly. Whenever there is matter arising, we address them accordingly because It is important to educate, continue to educate those who cannot, you know, educate themselves. Because so many people, when things come up, people come up with their different uh, ideology, different understanding, which so many of them that are very, very vulnerable somebody will use that same thing that comes up to you know manipulate them so that is the reason why we have come this evening again to make sure that we continue to expose we continue to debunk the lies the activities of the enemy. If you are joining, share this video, allow others to join. Of course, you have seen the video that is making round on social media where our Lego team, the member of our Lego team or the lead of our Lego team Michael Zokome, but you know, son Michael Zokome was granted interview by Arise News, and so many people came up with different opinion. We are going to be talking about that. We are going to be talking about the political solution thereof. That is exactly the reason why I brought that to our screen because we must discuss about the political solution. It is very, very necessary for us to understand what political solution is all about because the enemies will continue to use that as a weapon to continue to you know deceive so many of you of course many shall come in my name to say they are leading you to the destiny to your destination and they shall deceive many the, you know, because the important thing is that the Bible that so many of you read or read tells you everything that is happening in this struggle today. It tells you about the stories of the Israelites, the stories of Israelites and Moses. Even the story of Jesus Christ, which they told you, told you that many shall come in my name to say that they are Christ, which is that explanation of that metaphor. 
is what is playing out in IPOB today as the autopilot will come to tell you that they are leading you to freedom. You know, I want you to understand that during the time when the Israelite was coming out of Egypt, I want you to pick up something that I want to navigate there. Remember that these people we talk about, when we talk about the Israelites, we are talking about our people. When they were coming out of the land of Egypt, we know that you know people, places where it is called the Israelites. We know that you know places where it is called the Israelites today. You know, that is a different case scenario. That is a new case scenario. We are talking about the ancient time. Now, when the Israelite was being led out of Egypt by Moses, you shouldn't forget that when Moses left the Israelite to go to the mountain top to seek for the you know, guidance and guideline from God to seek for the face of Tukwoki Kabiyama. You know what happened that time? Because the Israelites are now and have seen Moses as if there is no Moses. You know, it means that we are unsafe. When he went to the mountain, the Israelites could not do without Moses. Now they have to make themselves chi. They make for themselves a graven, a graven image, which they called God, because they can no longer see Moses that is, that is leading them and hearing from God. They created one for themselves because they don't know they are in from, from their out. They do not know they are, you know, their ease from their wars. That is exactly the reason why they had to make that decision. Give Aaron, the brother to Moses, the ornament to create the God for them. So that as Moses is not around, we will have something to hold on to. Even if that God they are creating did nothing for them, rather it enslaved them the more. They don't have a choice. They just want to have something. Of course, so many of you knows that the, you know when Mazen Namdekano was out there speaking to us, addressing Biafrans, you will understand that Mazen Namdekano he gives hope to our people and not false hope. When Mazen Namdekano is there, each time he comes online, people actually check their pages to see if Mazen Namdekano is online speaking because they want to hear updates. They want to hear updates. They want to hear how we are going to get our freedom from these people that is killing our people every day. They want to hear it. They want to hear how we are going to, you know, navigate this attack that Nigeria is descending upon our people. All this mayhem that Nigeria is inflicting on our people, all this inhuman treatment, they want to hear how we can navigate it. Now they keep on checking their Facebook, checking Radio Biafra, each off and on. Now, all of a sudden, that voice is no longer there. Now, the Israelite history repeated itself again. Now, before that voice left for the mountain, to pray. That voice gave a, a guideline <laughs> to the people of Israel. This is your God, the God of Israel. Elohim Tukwokikabiyama. He is your God. If you call him God, he call you son. If you obey him, he lead you out of captivity. If you follow his direction and his principle through Moses, he will lead you out of captivity. Now, immediately when Moses left, that same, you know, ad, you know, 
guidelines. That's um disciplinary you know guideline. They forgot it immediately. How did they forget it? Because they can no longer hear from Moses. They want it raw. They want somebody, you know, they can no longer hear from Moses. So they have to make a plan of something that will represent the voice of God through Moses. They have to make an image that they will rely upon. Not knowing that the image, even though they knew that the image is leading them nowhere, they knew that the image is bringing them back to captivity. They said, we have to hold on. That is the gullibility of our people. That is the history of our people. That is the history repeating itself today. Now, immediately, Mazen Namdekano was captured. Somebody who is clever came up and start, which is the graven image in that, you know, story. The graven image that Aaron created for the Israelites. Remember, Aaron is a, is a brother to Moses. Aaron is a brother to Moses. That is the reason why when we talk about the infiltration, you talk about Kanon Takan also, the brother to Mazen Nam the Kan. So Aaron created a graven image, given to with their ornament. Bring your ornament. We bring all these things you have. Let us make something for ourselves quickly. You know, since we can no longer see Moses, we don't know. Um, which way to turn again, even though Moses gave them guideline of how to go about when he is not there. They did not want to follow the, or look for the guideline. They have to actually do for themselves what they are planning, you know, to do what they want, actually, which is something they see. Now, that replaces bring your ornament. Now, inside bring your ornament, there is Kanon Takano, there is Nen Nianya. Your ornament is within Nen Nianya. And uh, Kanon Takano have to, you know, go through Nen Nianya with your ornament. And now, going through Nen Nianya with your ornament, now finding a way to support the graphic, the graphing image that you he is going to create for you people that is the reason why from the beginning canon takano was the one who actually made a berima to have what he you know <clears throat> this confidence that he has today it was canon takano who actually did everything that you see a berima is sitting on today shouting and let her call him criminal they let her call him criminal that he sold his brother you will be wondering could that be true if he was protecting the interests of this guy and let her the same person you are protecting the, his interest let her call you criminal the same person nelly was protecting his interest let her called nelly criminal <laughs> uh, is that not an irony so that is by the way. Now, that grave, graven image that they have made for themselves, worshipping it, knowing that it's leading them nowhere. But as long as they know that they have, it has eyes, it cannot see. It has ears, it cannot hear. It has legs, it cannot move. All it stays there is to give you hope. Because they made it, they created it for the sake of giving them hope. And that hope that they are seeking, when they are looking at it, they believe that is, that hope is there. What am I trying to say in this my metaphoric story this evening? The same history that is repeating itself. Mazen Nam the Khan immediately when he is he got he went to the mountain to pray. His brother did all his mistakes, all his, you know, I will not call it mistake because he could not, he never even admitted that he did any mistake. Now he did all his mistakes. Now he now ushered autopilot, infiltrators into the struggle. 
he ushered infiltrators into the struggle. Reason best known to him for ushering infiltrators into the struggle. Now, after ushering the infiltrators into the struggle, the infiltrators know Nyaka. Now, they continue to worship that graven image, having hope on this graven image. And as if the graven image was giving them hope or actually talking to them, now, they were doing everything they could without knowing that this image that they are building is a setback, it's setting them back. Each and every day they come out, they pray to this image. It set them one step back. Each and every day they go, they pray to this image. It set them one step back. Now, they, they, are, they are not realizing it. They saw that they are now going back. They are not proceeding towards the promised land given to them, you know, promised them to them by God. It never made them change their mind. That is where a story is that a, a, an adage is derived. That is where the, that metaphor created all this adage. Such as Manzane Loko or Sinona Ramano. So now they were praying to nonsense that they knew nothing about, believing that this thing is doing something for them. And that thing was killing them, destroying them, handing them back to the hands of the Egyptians. When Moses came down from the mountain, he saw what happened he got mad he got very very mad upset now believe you me so many of you who are intelligent will understand this you know story that i just told you from the scripture from the history of your ancestors Many of you may understand it. Many of you will be able to contextualize it to the, you know, to the situation or to this conundrum that we are facing now. Many of you will actually see it as, you know, <laughs> a story, just just ordinary story, because they don't have, they have ears, they cannot hear. They have eyes they cannot see they have legs they cannot walk and it is not about having eyes and cannot see it is a metaphor there because you can hear your destruction you cannot actually try to escape from it you can hear about things that can destroy you you will not escape from it because you are hoping that that voice you are hearing is not voice that you're supposed to listen to. Maybe you undermine the voice that you are hearing. Come out of her. Come out of her. Like, because you don't have the spirit of discernment, you continue to move ahead with what your mind is telling you, not what your heart is telling you. Because if you search deep down your heart, you will understand that there is a truth inside that heart. So the same thing that happened during that time when Moses came down from the mountain, he saw all these things that the Israelites made courtesy of the brother who made everything oyatoko. Now he got very, very upset. He got mad. That is what happened. So the question here, if Mazen Nam the Kano come out today, is he going to get mad as Moses? Or is he going to be calm and handle everything the way 
that will, you know, explain everything without him actually, you know, coming, being physical about it. That question is for you to answer because I have given you a story that will lead you <laughs> to the answer of that question. The stories of our lives. The stories of our lives. This story will always repeat itself every 400 years if we mess up with the law of Chukwoki Kabiyama. The story will continue to come by every four generation. The story, the metaphor, it is history that you can never erase. I will visit your children, the third and fourth generation, with the mistakes of their fathers. I will visit them with the mistakes of their fathers, the sins of their fathers. I will visit the third and the fourth generation. That mistake, visitation of that third and fourth generation, it is the repeating of that mistakes, bringing it back that they may make that same mistake as the, I know, so that they will now realize how they began, how they will now solve their problem because it's bringing them back to what made them to lose God. As so many of you might not know the fourth generation is where we are today. And that mistake has come by to challenge us again. How we handle those type of mistakes is now will determine rather where we are going next because it will always come. Just because they told you that Jesus Christ is a born of Holy Spirit. It is a metaphor so that when you see Jesus Christ, you will not recognize that he is. You will be looking at, for a winged creature, not a skinned person, somebody flesh and blood, so that you will not recognize them, your, your Savior, when they are around. Then the story of Moses, they called it, a craven image. Then the man who has the direction of how to lead them to the promised land came down, saw that they have chosen another leader for themselves. That is exactly decoding the metaphor. They have chosen another leader, another guardian, another, you know, savior according to them for themselves and while you know the man that has that direction the guideline that will lead them out of captivity was actually in the mountain for their sake instead of them having faith instead of them being steadfast to allow the man in the mountain to come down to tell them what to do or to follow the principles of the man in the mountain, the legacy, the laid down structure, because the man in the mountain already laid down a laid down structure, knowing that there are some time where I will be in the mountain, you will look for me. You might not see me the time you want to see me. Follow these guidelines. Follow this principle. It will guide you until I return. That is how they started making for themselves a new leader. That leader is a leader of destruction. That is the reason why it is called a graven image. 
a graphing image. A leader that will lead you to destruction. They made it for themselves. It delayed. You know what it did? It delayed the journey that they're supposed to travel for maybe a few days. They had to travel it for 100 years. Uh, was it how many years? I might not be sure with the number, but it prolonged their journey to freedom, right? It prolonged their journey to freedom. Now, the question here is, having seen and having heard the limitations of our people, which when Master Namdekan was with us, he told us, we lost it in 67 to 70 because of discipline, because of indiscipline, rather. We do not obey the last order. Indiscipline. We do not obey. If Moses say, wait here for me, as God directed, because it was God that chose Moses, he never chose himself. Wait here for me. You say no. Moses, how can you say wait here for you? One week you never return. Two weeks you never return. It means let us look for another somebody who will lead us from here. You told us to wait. Now you look for somebody. He lead you into destruction. By the time Moses comes by, many of you must have died. Many of you must have been taken back to captivity. Many of you must have been destroyed for the sake of indiscipline. Now, who do you blame? You blame yourself. Are you going to blame someone whom chose himself to be the leader in the absence of Moses? Because he want to, he want fortune, he want fame. He want that honor given to Moses upon himself, even though he knows he does not have what it takes to wear the shoes of Moses. He is forcing it, knowing that the people of Israel who are supposed to be waiting for Moses, where Moses asked them to wait, they are naive and gullible. Because they have been, they are, you know, they were oppressed for 400 years. So they become so naive and gullible that anything can serve, anything can go, anything you know is manageable. We want it in the play in the show. We want it facey. We don't want to rely on you know on instruction. Let us go and do it. Give us gun. Let us go to war. Give us gun. Let us go to war. Without planning, if they give you gone, you leave this place where you are supposed to be waiting. Now you go to war without a leader. The man that knows the guideline given to him to guide you through to your freedom. By the same Chukwo Kikabiyama, who led you into captivity, who is ready to lead you out of captivity, but he has to choose one, you know, choose a leader to lead you out of captivity. And that leader told you, sit here, let me seek the face of that Chukwokike, who is leading us out. So that by the time I come out, we will have a guideline, a guided prince, you know, a guided message and strategy that we will use to proceed in this journey. It is not a journey of let us just wake up and start going. Because the map that you are going to use to get to the promised land, it is somebody that has it. It is not you. The man you are choosing, the graven image that you are choosing does not know that map. It does not know the road to the promised land. He will just act as if he knows for you to give him that respect you give to Moses. And for him to, you know, Achieve that fortune, achieve that fame. He doesn't care what his actions 
is causing the children of Israel. He doesn't care about it. All he care about is let me wear the shoe of Moses. How can he be the only one wearing this shoe, taking all this glory, all this respect? Why can't I be the one doing it? Now, Bible is something that happens in our everyday lives. It is the story of our lives. Bible is not all spiritual. Bible is not all spiritual. You understand? Bible is like a story, guarded principle, constitution of our lives. In the wrong hand, they translate it, they explain it, they analyze it in a very wrong way that you will never understand anything from it. But when it goes to the hands of those who own it, they will now explain it, who own it and want to explain it to you without using it to actually extort money from you. They will tell you the real thing about that Bible. It is ordinary book in the, in the hands of those who does not know the metaphor inside it. If you cannot decode the metaphor, it is ordinary book. A book. But when you are able to decode the metaphor, you will understand that it is a principle of life. Go this way, go that way. Know that when this thing happened, you should go and now contextualize it with this story you have heard from your ancestor. This is our ancestral story that you will never take away. Even though so many people bastardize that story, so many people are using it for their own selfish gain, which makes you to start now doubting the stories of our lives. Because they have taught you this story in a different, you know, you know, in their own ideology, in their own selfish ideology that you will no longer understand that. This thing that they are teaching you is actually something that is happening within and around you. That is why they say, if only na chonu kenu, omaro na odia no boka, odunu kana ina chonu kenu. What you are looking for, the guideline is in the Bible waiting. The guideline is in the Bible waiting. But you will not understand. Every prophecy, those who will tell you they are prophet, every prophecy that is going to unfold in this world, it is written in the Bible. The prophecy of who will destroy America is there. The prophecy of how they will destroy America is there. NATO is there. You know, all these things are in the Bible. And when you read them, you see them, they are coming. Tomorrow, somebody will read them and come and say, I'm giving you a prophecy. Um, ancient Medes will rise up against the, 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 the new Babylon, the country in the north. <laughs> Without you knowing that these things are written, just when you are now approaching towards that end, the reason why it is very important for you to read that book and understand it, for somebody not to use it to manipulate you, for somebody not to tell you different from your everyday life, because it is a guarded principle for the children of Chukwoki Kabiyama, the peculiar people, the ancient people. You've been reading it, but yet you continue to make the mistakes that your ancestors made, because you are being taught, you know, these ten stories wrongly. You are being taught about, you know, these stories are, you know, they tell you about these stories wrongly. They don't just give you these stories in a simple way that you may understand it. What am I trying to say? 
that what is happening in IPOB in the freedom that we are fighting today, the freedom we are, you know, fighting to achieve today, it is actually, it happened actually four generations ago. The same way, the same way, the translators made it so difficult that you may not understand it. And those who translated it and, you know, in a, you know, who were, who translated these stories and uh, embedded it, you know, with metaphor or in a metaphor, when these stories are unfolding, they will be looking at you laughing exactly how we want them, how we have projected them to be. That is where the, you know, adage that come. Don't allow yourself to be what the world wish for you or say that you are going to be. Because now, all these things that, all these stories that you see, that is in, that's the story of your lives. They manipulated it, embedded it in a metaphor that you may not understand it. When it is unfolding, they will be somewhere just like we have wanted it. It will continue to, you know, haunt you because you don't learn from your mistakes. You don't learn from your mistakes. Lack of discipline. It has done a lot. It has taken a lot from us. Indiscipline. Indiscipline. It makes us so naive makes us so gullible that we will want to accept what we ought not to accept. We now say yes to what we supposed not to say yes to. We embrace things that we are not supposed to embrace because of discipline. We want it physical. If it is not physical, we cannot. If it is not radical, we cannot embrace it. We want it to be radical. So whenever you, they, somebody has seen your, you know, loopholes, they have seen your problem, they will now utilize the opportunity, bringing something that looks like solution to your problem while using it to, to manipulate you, bringing you back to the, you know, to where you are running out to come out from. You are running out from rather bringing you back there you will continue to believe that no he is taking us out there because it is like when you go to the beach you when you go to the beach you stand in front of the beach when the wave come you know when the waves come it comes it approaches you like this after it approaches you like this now it starts going back. The water now with the wave, the wave, when the waves go down, the water starts going back. And you are standing on a soil, on this, you know, soil, not inside the water. When the wave is going back, the soil will start pulling you back. You know, we continue to pull you back without you even knowing that you are being pulled back because you are standing, you know, the wave is now under you pulling you back to the water, you won't understand it until you go closer to the water. Maybe when another wave is coming, then you will understand that you were here now, but you are, cannot tell how you got closer to the water again because you don't understand what is under you that is pulling you. How? You saw where you are supposed to be standing. A force now came out, pulling you. You don't understand that this force is pulling you out of where you are supposed to stand to be safe. Where you're supposed to be standing to be safe. In a, you know, on, on top of the soil, not inside the water. It is pulling you. But you don't, you, you are not actually, you know, paying attention to know that you are moving back to the water. Only when another wave comes, now you will say, no, I, I continue to move forward. 
that is when maybe it might be too late by then you will realize <laughs> that you are very close again to the water because it does not show you the water when it's pulling you. It shows you that you are standing on a dry, you know, on a just a, a dry surface where the water came and they went back. It will not show you the water. Now, since it is not showing you the water that is your enemy, in that beach, which comes with which that waves will use to wash you away, it's not showing you the water. You believe everything is all right without knowing that that is dangerous, something that is pulling you without you understanding or knowing that you are moving. And you will be there, and uh, now you some of you will be carried away. We are standing, we are in the beach, you know, maybe another wave will come maybe you are turning your back another wave will come flush you in because you are carried away you are not paying attention to what is going on around you you only pay attention to the beauty of the the surroundings you don't pay attention to the danger within that surrounding that is the problem of our people. If you can learn how to pay attention to the danger that is surrounding you. And this is the reason why so many of our youth today are being killed by Hope Uzodema. This is the reason why so many of our youth are being killed by Nigerian military and government. Why? They don't pay attention to their surroundings. They don't. They always look at the beauty of that surrounding. That is the reason why you will hear 20 killed today, 14 killed yesterday. Tomorrow again, another one will be killed. They will just make noise. After one week, it's forgotten. Another one will be killed. They will make noise. After one week, it's forgotten without them trying to find everlasting solution towards this thing that is killing them because their mind is hollow. They do not have any productive solution. They will say, hope oh, or them are this, hope oh, or them are that at the end, or they will protest for one day, two days. It's gone because they are not paying attention. They are not paying attention. They are relying on hope where there is no hope. Are you paying attention? Our people love to rely on where there is no hope. They give their energy where there is no hope. Because that place where there is no hope, when they see something that is happening there, because of the, you know, the... The, because of the lies, the shenanigans, that is the reason why when you see a prophetic uh, church, you find millions of people without them knowing. Even though they will be there for 100 years, you will not find the miracle that you are seeing the boy showing you on the TV. You will not get it yourself. You continue to be there. They will continue to tell you maybe tomorrow is your day. You never know. God will remember you one day. But they will continue to show you different miracles from different people every day. But it will never come to you. It will never come to you yet. You say, I have hope. I have hope. I have hope. You remain there. Because, today, Nigeria. He said he would destroy Nigeria. He said that, he, in fact, he is already destroying Nigeria already. That is where it is happening. From Monday to Friday, from 1st to the 30th, from 1st month to the 12th month, from one day to the 365 days, 
the same approach, the same format, no achievement. Rather, it, it actually inputs you in more danger. It places you in more danger because you lack discipline. You are asked to wait here by Moses. Who knows the roadmap to your promised land? Rather you say no, Moses is taking so long. Moses is taking so long. Let's not rely on Moses. Who knows that Moses or Jogonenu You never know. That is what they will be contemplating amongst themselves. We never know whether Moses has gone to the mountain and died. It's better we make a, you know, we find something, you know, something that we can do for ourselves. Because I am man no here, nice madam, madam, madam. I am man no here, can madam, nice more, more. That is how you will always, you know, this is how you will always make your brain to, you know, be satisfied with your selfish and stupid suicidal approach that you will take without now deliberating on it, how can somebody who has not visited Nigeria in the past 20 years, or let me not say 20, in the past 18 years, <clears throat> he has never visited Nigeria. He is in the past 18 years, he never went through what you have gone through. In the past 18 years, he never, this person, this person we are talking about, let me tell you, he is, Simon Eba is 35 years of age today, 35 years. He turned 35 years, 30, 36 years. He just turned 36. Now, minus deduct 36. Let me do this mathematics quickly. Because there is somewhere I want to take you. There is some somewhere I want to take you. Now. Simon Eber was only 15 or around 16 years before he traveled to Finland. Simon Epa was 16, 15 years when he left Nigeria to Finland. Since that time, Simon Epa never visited home. 15, 16 years he left home. He never visited home. He does not know what you that is on the ground is going through. And he will not know the solution to solve your problem that he never experienced. He never experienced this problem in the last, you know, if, okay, in the last 19 years, he never experienced this problem that you are facing. He never experienced it. Now, he, will, he does not know what you might do because it is when you look around you, you will look for solution to your problem. You are within you. Somebody that is around you, oh, you know, modern son and you see Asia. If you are not around me, you will not get the smell of my mouth. So you haven't been there. You went, you left there as a child, a minor. A minor you left there as Nigeria. You didn't experience anything that all these people that is around you are experiencing. You did not experience even one of it. Today, from where you are, living in a luxurious country, country that, you know, have everything, that you, that you even had the opportunity to go for their conscript. Country that you are, you know, you can actually go to the bank and tell the bank, I want this car. 
the bank will buy it and give it to you. Everything you want, you can get in this country you are. You can go to the, you, you can actually, you know, do one or two to your house and you call your insurance and say, you know, um, there is a water damage and it damage all my uh, appliances. Insurance will replace all these appliances after investigation. Now, somebody that is living inside a hellfire that you left, even when you left that hellfire, the hellfire is not worse the way you are seeing it today. It was still bearable when you left it because it is the more the, you, it is aging, the more it gets worse. <laughs> the hellfire you call the zoo. The more it is aging, the more it gets worse. Now, you are now coming to tell people who's, who has been there you did not go there to know where you have to begin. Because before you want to solve someone's problem, you need to first of all, experience that person's problem. Know the area the problem is coming from. You need to know the angle you are not going to engage this problem from. You have not done that. You left Nigeria when you are 16. Today you are 36. Today you are 36. A very young boy, yo. a very, very young boy. That's what he is. He's a boy. So, and now being 36, you have spent how many years outside? 20 years. 20 years in Finland. 20 years of your life in Finland, so you have forgotten the experience of Nigeria. Now, instead of you, since you know that I want to, you know, if you were genuine, if you were genuine of trying to let these people solve the problems of these people, because Mazen Namdekan is a British citizen. Mazen Namdekan obtained this British citizen before, maybe, you know, before you even start, maybe before you even get your papers or marry that your wife to the extent that you had to do, you know, their a traditional way of marriage. You did it in their traditional wedding. That is the reason why he wore blanket on. She wore blanket on her head. She ha you have to do their, you know, their ways of marriage. Now, to get this paper, Mazen Namdekan was already British citizen when you are trying to do blanket marriage, head blanket marriage. Mazen Namdekan, when he began, he said. He have to go home. Let me now see which area I will start bringing this gospel. Let me know which angle I am going to start detoxifying our people. Detoxification of our people. Let me try to find which angle I am going to engage first. Let me go home and feel first what they are feeling. He, he went home. He started leading from the, from the ground. He started from the scratch. Not from top to bottom. He started from the bottom to the top. It is only APC that lead you from top to bottom. Now, as it is, just because he has a problem today, he went to the mountain to pray. He is in the mountain to get solution so that when he comes out, he will now give you the Ten Commandment. He will now give you the guideline principles that will give you you know, that will transition you into the promised land. 
you could not wait because somebody, you know, or his brother made a graven image, which is Simon Eber for you today. With other cabals, they build a, a graven image, which is Simon. And this graven image will now continue to tell you, move. Every in a Jews or they are continuing to move. Don't worry about where this Moses asks you to be. Moses is enjoying himself somewhere. You don't even know if Moses is died. So Moses has lost his memory in the mountain. Maybe he lost his way. He lost his way um, from the mountain. He does not even know how to come here anymore. So um, you don't need to wait for Moses anymore. Let us actually do it ourselves. How many destruction have you experienced for those of you who are informed on the ground not those of you who are creating groups not those of you who are creating subgroups today going there to bring propaganda to bring lies and brainwashing people no how many of you are on the ground to see the statistics of what is going on on the ground today how many of you how many of you get direct or first-hand information of what is going on in biafra land today how many of you only when they throw it on the your whatsapp group where you gossip you see it you gossip you blame whoever that you don't know somebody that you have never seen or said hi to you start blaming them that they have called them in Radio Biafra, that they have done this, they have done that. You see people, people that we are in a freedom fighting with, promoting criminals in Biafra land. <laughs> These are the people who want freedom. Remember that what kept you in captivity in Nigeria, it is criminality of your leaders criminality of your leaders which is the reason why you want to come out of it in order to build a nation that is spotless a nation with no blemish now while you are fighting to come out of it you are promoting criminalities people who do go to do cannibalism people who go to do um snatch people's cars car that you know what people suffer to buy a car in nigeria it is not like where you are or where simon is if he, you know you can go and say hello i want this car and they will check your affordability if they check your affordability if you merit it you buy it then if you have extra you can pay cash and take your car home you will not be locked in in any installment. Of course, so many people does not have the credit record to even buy anything on credit. So many of them. So that's why they have to rely on their cash to do it. Now, cars in Nigeria, you need to sweat to buy it, to have mobility. That if you sweat and buy it, somebody will come out there, snatch it from you, claiming that they are IPOP, they are ESN. Somebody in your petrol station, in your petrol station, somebody will come there. You know what it takes for you to buy a tanker of fuel. Sometimes it blow up on the road, it will not reach the petrol station. You suffer, you pay everything with the prayers and the fasting. For them to arrive to this petrol station, somebody will come there, fill full tank. They will tell you we are IPOB and ESN. They will not pay you. And you, as because of somebody who never experienced the pain of people on the ground, because he left there when he was a minor. You know what is a minor? He was not even 18 years old when he left Nigeria. He was a minor will come to tell you that those criminals that are going to the market 
to collect money from your mothers who are somewhere your mom tell you agree or no obal omelo baka omelo baka or no go tell her bacha or obela abuna mili go abacha and elena afia or no omel granote ne elena afia somebody where the audacity is audacious and evil-minded to go in there to start taxing them pay your money inside the marketplace and somebody tomorrow if some if somebody come and mention the name of that criminal that is terrorizing your mother somebody will call them come and say they are calling the name of our men on the radio biafra they are calling their name in radio biafra they are killing our men you as an idiot will say ah china samoru this china samoru that because they have brainwashed you you don't get first class first hand information my people perish for lack of knowledge my people perish for lack of knowledge because they are ignorant when you don't get informed when you are uninformed you are ignorant when you don't have knowledge of what you want to hear or what you are digesting, you are ignorant. In your ignorance, you can make so many mistakes. Now, somebody who does not have, you know, what it takes to give you freedom, who promotes criminals, as long as you hear that these people are carrying gun, he will start doing fundraising, looking for them to give them. Because you don't know how to honor on your man a ground. He does not know anybody on the ground. So he cannot create any um, um group. Except if he hear that there is this group of criminals. We just need to sponsor them. We just need to give them money. Then when you give them money, they will go and start doing your bidding. You saw somebody who is snatching people's car because they never snatch your mother's car. They never snatch your brother's car. And they were called, singled out because they are actually demonizing our freedom fighting. They are actually prolonging our suffering. Because we know that this is not we whom we are. These are the moles that must be removed for us to get to our freedom. It is like tomorrow now, we, we these criminals, you are giving them gone, giving them everything. Without them repenting, you now bring all these criminals into Biafra land. Some of them, because they have a criminal, they are tough. You know, you now integrate them into, into politics. These are the criminals. freedom. You integrate them into politics. What do you think they are going to do to your to your nation building? They will bring it from ground, you know, top to ground zero. That is the reason why you will see so many of their irats. Like in, if you go to YouTube now. So many of their irats will be there gossiping, writing junk because they don't want to hear gospel. They are allergic to hearing the truth. They are allergic to the truth, to the knowledge of the truth. They are allergic to it. Once you start speaking truth to them, it becomes, you know, it starts itching their ears. They will start writing junk. All their irats. They are very active in writing junk. Now, you will tell me that criminals are the ones who are going to give you freedom. Where does it happen? You will tell me that the graven image Aaron created for the children of Israel are the ones who gave them freedom. Was it? <laughs> If Moses did not come, by the time they approached that, you know, that, um, what is the name of that river? By the time they approach that river, 
the sea rather it was going to swallow them if not that the moses who has that mandate you know when they talk about the river <laughs> a river it is not a river it is not necessarily that that story there was there was a river it is a coded story information now because Moses has that mandate to lead them out of this captivity. They say he struck because of the how they pissed him off. He had to struck the stick twice. The frustration. This is exactly what they have used Simon to see if Mazenam the can comes out. And he has, instead of striking the, 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 the walking stick or the, the wand that he, he has, which is the wand of power, if he's supposed to strike it once, he will strike it twice. That, you know, it will actually affect him himself. Now you will begin to understand what happened during the time of Moses, that he never entered the promised land. Who frustrated him? It was the same people that he was trying to save. The same people he was trying to lead to the promised land frustrated him. So that is exactly what they are trying, planning, to see if they will frustrate Mazen Nam the Kano to get angry and give up Biafra. If he give up Biafra, you are doomed. <laughs> that is exactly what they are trying to do. And when they tell you that Moses died, he couldn't make it. He was just like he gave up. Because the people only do. It's a of <laughs> Ndo do a gana promise land konya for freedom. Isi adro famma. So, they're trying to frustrate Mazen Namdekan. But do without them knowing that Mazen Namdekan is not only having that power of Moses or glory of Moses, he also have that of Joshua as well. Because they brought Joshua to the picture of that story. They brought Joshua to the picture of that, of that story. Now, what happened was that Mazenam the Kano will come out and he will not get that mad like Moses did Joshua in him will be activated the Joshua in him will be activated I know so many of you are now paying very good attention to understand where this my story is going Joshua in him will be activated while the time he is walking out of the DSS dungeon when he comes out what he is going to do he will appreciate those that need appreciation and we leave those whom you believe that they are the ones leaving you leading you to the promised land without you knowing they are leading you to hell he will ignore them. He will say, let the dead bury the dead. He will not get the angry, you know, angry as Moses did because he has Joshua in him. Are you paying attention? Do you read me? 
Because what they are waiting for today is that when Mazen Namdekanu comes out today, he will start, you know, he will lose it. He will start being emotional. He has Joshua in him. In as much as he has Moses, there is Joshua. Joshua is more present in him more than Moses. And that Joshua means tolerance. Tolerance. Slow in anger. Know how to manage your anger. If not, if not that Joshua in him, believe you me, Simon Epa will not be doing what he's doing today. And the, what I am telling you is divine. If not that Joshua in him, Simon Epa will not do what he's doing today. Because the only thing he need to do, speak the word. The only thing, speak the word. And leave the rest. But that Joshua in him, continue to take charge of what is going on. Now, what am I trying to say? It is that Mazen Namdekanu is going to come out of the DSS dungeon. And Mazen Namdekanu is going to lead us to our promised land. We are now one hour into this program. Now let me bring to you this Maz, uh, Mike Ozokome. Let, me, let us actually listen to what Mike Ozokome said, and he talked about political solution. Before we go there, I want to show you the reason why I must talk about it and the reason why I am also talking, you know, about this political solution that reflected on what Mike said. Now, Listen attentively from your graven image. Listen to your graven image that you believe will replace Moses and replace the one leading Moses to your promised land. Listen to him. Like uh, as this, I love what you said and which is good, but the other people don't understand you. That if you take us to make any uh, friends with any of, uh, of, of the world, we are willing to do that to make sure we have that. Somebody, somebody say, somebody say that if I have listened, if we have seen Sahara reporter, that uh, uh, Mazi uh, Nandikano has relied on political solutions. <laughs> is, Sahara, is Sahara reporter our our spoke person? Is Sahara reporter part of our communication and all that? When this when this uh, Sahara reporter become the people that uh, or the media that uh, speak to us, we don't listen to nonsense. Sahara reporter is a Nigeria is a Nigeria agent, so he cannot come and tell us what our leader. They know what to do. If they say if the same as in the Kano has relied on political solutions, he should come out and tell us. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I think uh, that's a joke. Okay. <laughs> mm. November ending. If they don't release our leader, even when they listen, we will not listen to him again. <laughs> when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. Our leader will come out and... Did you hear that? This is the reason why we need to talk about the political solution. That is the reason why we must talk about it. This person that is telling you that Mazen Namdekanu is a joke that he rely on political solution, he will not tell you exactly what it means by political solution. Because he continue to tell you war, 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 because that he knows that when you make that mistake that he this guy will continue to kill you 
You see, this guy will continue to kill you. That is exactly what this guy is up to. He will continue to reduce the population of your gallant man that is going to fight that war in future by recruiting innocent people with criminals. They will tell these criminals, you know, we need more people. Go and find your friends. They will go and bring innocent people. Lying to them. People who don't have had access to me, social media. That they are going to work for ESN. Everybody will be appreciated. Everyone want to work for ESN. They will recruit them. Tomorrow they kill them. They will get into criminal activities. They will kill them. You think that you are doing judge money or you are doing the DOS or you are doing Mazen Nam <laughs> You are doing yourself. If you do good, you do yourself. If you do bad, you do yourself. You see what they said here. If they don't release Mazen Nam by November, that when they release him, they will not listen to him again. What does that mean? You shouldn't release him. People are growing fatigue. If you release him now, people will listen to him and disregard this, you know, infiltrator. But if you don't release him after November, people will now grow fatigue and stop listening to him. By then, this guy must have used, we are going to war, we are going to war, brainwash all of you. This is the plan this guy have in mind. This is his plan, and that is the reason why we must touch on this political solution. It is speaking of the witch. that the witch appears because of... he. Ju they just did this two days or three days ago. Then Michael Zokome granted that interview which we are now going to analyze that political solution let's listen to this one more time because so many of you might not you know because i see so many of you might not hear that one correctly listen is our reporter part of our communication and all that when this when, when this uh, sahara reporter become the people that, that uh, or the media that uh, speak to us we don't listen to nonsense our uh, reporter to what our leader they know uh, mazi uh nandi kano has relied on political solutions <laughs> is our record is our reporter our our super person is our reporter a part of our communication and all that when this when this uh, sahara reporter become the people that uh, or the media that uh, speak to us we don't listen to nonsense so our reporter is a nigeria is a nigeria agent so he cannot come and tell us what our leader they know what to do if they say if the same as in Amerika has relied on political solutions he should come out and tell us <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> i think uh, that's a joke okay <laughs> mm. <laughs> I hope oh, you heard that. Me. Did you hear that? Even if when they release him, we will not listen to him again. That is exactly what they said. Now, let me tell you, let me bring to you something that you will understand exactly where this thing is coming from. Now, let me show you something from the, you know, from when they were, from where they emanated. Let me show you. Let's see where these things emanated. Now. Just one minute.
because what this guy want to do is overthrow Mazen Namdekano. What he want to do is to overthrow Mazen Namdekano. If not people like us in the media, <laughs> by now you will, you know, he would have gone very far to overthrow Mazen Namdekano. Overthrowing him is not the issue. The issue is that is he overthrowing him to actually take you to your promised land? The answer is no. You want to overthrow him just because he want to get fame, fortune, business, billion politicians, telling them I want one billion naira so that you will win this election. We will do one or two. That is the reason he want to overthrow Mazen Namdekano. Now, listen to this from where it started. Listen. Uh, all right. Welcome to the program. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Yes, go ahead. You are my corporate. A greeting. A greeting. Before, before I go, please, I want to use this opportunity now. Because I, I came in. I hope the voice is coming out clear. Is the voice coming out clear from your side? If it is coming out clear or if it is not, you let me know. Pay attention for you to know where this overthrow, when he started planning it. Overthrow. <laughs> if our leader comes out, we will not listen to him again. This is a message, planned call. So that let us see how their friends will react to see if we will bring something like that more often. To see if we are going to continue to say it to Biafran until it's sinking. Because they have started from, they started from, they have created Mazen Nam the Kano Doppelganger. I debunked it. They now did everything. They say he lost his memory. I debunked it. Double ganga, I debunked it. This is a new strategy. Let us use the audience calling in, acting as if they are one person you know, will tell you we. One person will tell you we will not listen to him again. One person now, one audience is now talking for the whole difference, according to them. It was arranged to see how the message is going to go to the mind of these fools that follows them. Now, listen to this. It is my second time. I've not come to your platform before, oh, but I listened to you. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to tell you not to defeat. You are my leader. Take it or leave it. For standing on the boat, you are my leader. You are my leader. Take it or leave it. And as this guy is saying it, he is with him. What what his reply will be if he debunk it to say that I am not your leader. Your leader is in the DSS dungeon. I am just a disciple, according to how he claimed. Did you? Let's see if he debunked it. Pay attention to that uh, voice. Oh. Pay attention. Listen. For standing on the boat, you are my leader. I don't care whoever in this movement that have sworn an oath destroy or to sabotage then on ground <laughs> I would 
couldn't have come back here but I was this was the time he's creating a shenanigan to claim that he is in charge of the esn this was when he wanted to claim charge of being in charge of the esn now listen attentively he called him my leader you are my leader imagine the esn that does not know this boy this boy <laughs> you know esn that does not know this boy i used to think that this boy is actually old or you know i don't know he's still a boy he's still wet behind his ears now they don't know him oh he was not there when they were formal but now the ESN, now according to him, he called them ESN, does not know their leader anymore. <laughs> the one who gave them oath that they are, <laughs> administer their oath. The one who chose them and they bring them to secure our land. They don't know him anymore. They are now knowing somebody that never appeared on the picture, the graven image. They recognize the graven image. Pay attention. So, did you hear that? I hope you saw the video. Uh, Listen to it or so, right. see it the, in we'll full screen. So that you will not say that it is cut and join. See the video in a full screen. See how it was actually, you know, it was cutted out from screen recording or what, whatever. So, see it and hear it speak again then you will now remember this one yourself? that I'm going to repeat again. Okay. Yes, go ahead. You are my comrade. I greet you. I greet you. Before, before I go, please, please, I want to use this opportunity now. Now you have seen it. I, I came in now that you have seen that one let us reiterate because we are now trying to bring the old and the new for you to know exactly their plans for you to know exactly what their plans is pay attention to this one as well listen to it Just join them together then we move on Put them together, we move on. Twitter and make sure that the secretary of, of course, when he make, if he make tweet, I don't know whether he make tweet at all. November ending. If they don't release our leader, even when they release him. Is our reporter part of our communication and all that? 
when this when this uh, Sahara reporter become the people that uh, or the media that uh, speak to us, we don't listen to nonsense. So our reporter is a Nigeria is a Nigeria agent, so he cannot come and tell us what our leader. They know what to do if they say if the same as in the canon has rely on political solution, he should come out and tell us. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I think uh, that's a joke. Okay. <laughs> Mm. See, we give them from November ending. If they don't release our leader, even when they listen, we will not listen to him again. <laughs> we will not listen to him again. If they release him, we will not listen to him again. Who are you doing a favor when you cannot listen to your Joshua that will lead you to the promised land again? Are you doing your enemy favor or you are doing yourself a favor? Now, for you to understand the type of people whom are supporting autopilot, you see the advice, if they don't release him in this November, even if they release him, we will not listen to him again. Who are you doing a favor? Are you doing the enemy favor? <laughs> or you are doing who the favor? Now, the answer, when we get to that bridge, we will cross it. When we get to that bridge, he said, means that we will continue to remind people that we don't need to listen to him because they have tried with saying that they have cloned Mazen Nam the Kanu so that when he comes out, you will not listen to him. They have cloned him. When he comes out, you will not listen to him. He has lost his memory which prompted our first lady to come and tell you that Mazen Nam de Kanu is, you know, you know, mentally sound, that he mind, his mind is still in check, that she, he actually reminded her of things that she forgot, which they changed or turned it upside down to say that Mazen Nam de Kanu wife said that his health is, 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 you know, perfect more than the ones that are outside. They have tried it in so many ways. It never sell. They have now pulled up a new strategy. If they don't release him this, this, this and that, we will not listen to him again. Now, ask Simon Eber and his arranged caller. If you don't listen to your leader, are you doing Nigeria a favor? Are you doing Nigeria Britain a favor? Or are you doing who a favor because he you know he is the voice that they fear he know they know that the roadmap he has will give us biafra and extra so that's why they they took him they kidnapped him went to someone's country and kidnapped him and rendition him because they are scared they don't want him they don't want you to listen to him again now you are telling them that if they don't release him in this and that, you will not listen to him again. <laughs> Which means you are telling them, hold them, hold him there. Hold him there. Because if you hold him more, we will, people will start losing faith in listening to him. That is exactly what that means. Now, we talked about political solution. Now, let us go to now Michael Zokome. Because we are actually running out of time. We're supposed to be here for an hour, but we have already, you know, we have already stayed here more than an hour. Wow, where is the... So, just one moment. Let me bring. Yes. Let me bring. The video. Of Michael Zokome.
Now, listen to this. through what he calls a more productive political solution. In the petition to the president, Ozakome wants the president to... Attorney General of the Federation to enter a nolly prosecution. He says this is to correct what he describes as a long... IPOB, Nnamdi Kanu, has written to President Muhammad Buhari urging him to order the immediate release of Nnamdi Kanu through what he calls a more productive political solution. In the petition to the President, Ozakome wants the President to instruct the Attorney General of the Federation to enter a nolly prosecution. He says this is to correct what he describes as a long standing travesty. The senior advocate of also pointed to the July 2022 ruling of the United Nations Working Group on arbitrary detention, which the Nigerian government had in response to the UN agency's communication. Well, for more on this issue, we're now being joined by the senior advocate of Nigeria himself, and Chief Mike Ozekome, who is the lawyer to Nandi Kanu. Thank you so much, senior advocate, for joining us on the news tonight. We do appreciate your time. Uh, just to start this conversation, uh, you say you are appealing to the president to release Nandi Kanu through a more productive political solution. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, what it means is that. Yeah, what it means is that. Okay, before we proceed, he said that he want the president to release Namde Kano through a political solution. Now, you have heard when we talk about political solution in general, in every freedom fighting. That is the reason why we. it is very, very important that you know when you are making for yourself a graven image. In every freedom fighting, there must be a political solution. There must be a political roundtable before there is escalation or exploration of any other means. Because this political solution must come referendum is a political and democratic you know process referendum is a political and democratic process because how is it a political and democratic process referendum is something you will say that how you know the democratic process is where you are going to vote by yourself where you are going to be are you going to be in Nigeria, or are you going to be in Biafra? That is referendum, democratic process through referendum. And now political process through referendum is that the people who is going to bring up this referendum, it is the people in politics that are going to bring out this referendum according to the constitution of that nation. According to the constitution of the nation. So these two you can never throw them away while fighting for freedom. So whenever somebody is so scared, when you talk about political solutions, somebody is very, very scared and telling you or not even scared, misleading you because he is uninformed about what freedom fighting is. He's uninformed about the processes that you must go before you get freedom which you need to explore every process you can never omit any of them you can never override any of them so that you will know the next step to take the more you are exploring these processes you will now begin to know and the next step that you are going to take and every day you talk about political solution. People will come and tell you, hey, they are going for political solution. Hey, they are going for political solution. And the political solution, they will start mocking us because we talk about political solution. Without them knowing, 
you know this is actually laughable you are you claim that you are a spokesperson but simple english called political solution you cannot an analyze it to the people that you are claiming that you are their spokesperson simple english you cannot analyze it for them you cannot you cannot even explain it for them to understand it yet you continue to claim that you are a lawyer <clears throat> now let us continue to hear it let us continue to hear it but of course you will never ever omit political solution before you move to the next you know action there must be a political solution now so let's continue you may win the war without winning the peace so at the end of the day it is always better to have peace lasting peace not what if mk abiola we call peace of the graveyard or peace of the cemetery so i wrote to the president mm -hmm. a 38 page letter with an executive summary of three pages pleading with mr president to please release nam the kanu immediately and unconditionally because in the canoes trial as far as the facts have shown and as far as i'm concerned as his lawyer it's nothing but a political trial in the canoe is only a metaphor for the ego struggle for self-determination a self-determination is recognized as a right by several international instruments the united nations charter section one united nations, united nations charter of 1945 section one of the international covenant on political and social rights of the people section one of the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights of the people section 20 of the african charter on human and people's rights all of them recognize self-determination to determine your destiny how you want to live as a necessary concomitant of human beings as homo sapiens so that was how now in 2012 founded ipod a non-violent organization we all saw the march marching of the street now let's take it one step at a time you win the war and you lose the peace nam de kanu is a political prisoner because them as a lawyer they have explored everything in their power they have explored everything within the jurisdiction of judiciary which in his own experience as a lawyer in the last more than four decades he's been a lawyer in for more than four decades now he saw that if Nam De Kanu is not being released by the judiciary, I will. I am not trying to be actually, you know, professional, be professionally correct or politically correct. I am going to tell you exactly what Michael Zokome is saying here. The son. Now. He is saying that they have explored every possible means within the jurisdiction of the judiciary. And 
having seen the cases and the you know the prosecutions and the prosecutor that they know within themselves they know according to the law they know according to their three four decades experience that Mazen Nam the Kano not being released because they know that the cases they presented is not a case. It is incompetent for somebody to present such case and the court of law is entertaining it. Now, because of that, he is now telling the world that the judiciary is crippled, that judiciary is actually not independent, that the judiciary of Nigeria is a cabal, that the judiciary of Nigeria it cannot work without the cabal's you know, authorization. That is exactly the message that me, myself, as a judge, money that I am, is seeing here. Now, because of this failed judiciary, that what they are doing there is just a waste of time in that court of law. Because after they go there, they do everything that is within the jurisdiction of judiciary, that is within their mandate, as a son and 40 years of experience, that they have seen cases. And this one, Neri Jurafo, this one that doesn't even, you know, have, that has wobbly legs, cannot be, you know, dealt with by the judiciary. Now he saw. It is not the judiciary holding Namde Kano. It is the executive. So since it is the executive, he has to now write to the executive. Executive, we have seen that the judiciary is no longer the one holding Namde Kano because from high court, Buhari interfered. Of course, you know, Bintanyaku, there is something like a favor they are doing for, for her and her husband. So they interfered. They threatened her. Now, they now went to the other side. They have started interfering again. Since that uh, the executive have started interfering again, let me now write to the executive, which is the president, the, you know, to know. In fact, the, the, the true meaning of that letter is to let that president know that we know you are the one who is manipulating the justice system. And since you are the one manipulating the justice system, it is better to, you know, it is not a wise decision to achieve victory and lose the peace or win the war and lose the peace. <laughs> you know, a very, very good, intelligent advice. Now, release Mazen Nam the Khan, because in all ramification, we have investigated everything. The judiciary is ready to release him, but you are interfering. So he is no longer judicial matter. This is a political matter. So you are the one who actually appointed the attorney general. Who can now say this case of Unam de Kano is discharged, acquitted. And he can do that even if he does not want to do it you are the one who appointed him through favoritism i he didn't say that but i'm putting it because i know 
I know the history of how you appointed Atomi General, which is the dead Buhari who appointed him. Through favoritism, and you are controlling him. And it is in your hands to tell him, discharge this case. It is a disgrace to the Nigeria, you know, sovereignty or Nigeria nation. United Nation, they have given you, you know, advised you or ordered you to release Mazen Namdekano unconditionally. You flouted it because you believe that you are Nigeria Zoo. You cannot listen to anybody. Now you are now exercising your sovereignty as a nation because United Nation. But every day you go to United Nation, you give speech, you talk, you talk this, you talk that. I will assure, I can assure you, I will make sure, I will make sure that we contribute to the anger program. I will can assure you, we are going to have a credible election in the Nigeria. I can assure you, and you're going to live a good legacy. You know, you go there, shivering, talking. But when they tell you what you need to do that is within the law of this United Nation, that whenever, each time they call, you run, coming, that you should release Mazen Namdekano because you are violating human right. You can't. You could you actually now start acting tough in the tough. You are acting tough. You haven't seen people who act tough. They go, go to Russia. There are people who act tough. You are acting tough in a global stage. You cannot even speak. Speak up. You cannot challenge this United Nation. When all that president, including the president of Kenya that was crowned yesterday, challenge them and their activities towards the membership of security councils. <laughs> you couldn't challenge them. You are assuring them. People are, other African leaders, we are challenging them, including women. We are challenging them. You are assuring them. They have given you a directive for the sake of you assuring them all the time. Because they know that you don't know the law, international law, the law of where you are claim you are governing. That is the reason why Buhari will continue to hold an innocent man in a solitary confinement. An attorney general, Malami, who recruited somebody that is maybe his son to be the chief EFCC. This is the amount of favoritism that you see in Nigeria. Buhari singled him. He singled this guy from ESCC. Attorney General singled him and placed him there. If you see the similarity, you will see they look alike, like father and son. And they, according to the you know, background, they come from the same village. <laughs> The only thing that they didn't make public is that they are father and son or siblings. That is favoritism, nepotism. Nepotism. <laughs> now, you can no longer assure United Nations that you will follow their directive. And the United Nations that gave you directive, knowing that you have been selling them, I can assure you, I can assure you, you they have not taken any step to make sure that human right is not violated because you are a member of the 54th country. So, 
in all this shenanigan, the message you will obtain from here, it is that the judiciary is hopeless, that the judiciary is re reliant to the executive. They are dependent on the executive to make a decision, a judicial decision for them to act. That is the message I am getting here. I don't know what about you, what you are getting there. Let us continue to listen to him. You will hear it. That is the reason why I have to pause it so that when I have explained some to you, when you come across it, you will understand it better. Pay attention. Is of Umwahia, Aba, Onicha, Enugu, and elsewhere. Blowing whistle, marching, singing, wearing beret. They were not violent until the 14th of September mm -hmm. 2017. When through Operation of Python, the Nigerian army invaded the ancestral home of Nam the Kanu with his father in residence, Eze Kanu, using Operation Python. In that operation, about 28 unarmed and innocent Nigerians were brutally mowed down. Enam the canoe escaped through his teeth with the whiskers and landed first in Rome and then Israel, where he deposed to an affidavit to show the circumstances under which he had run away from Nigeria, that he did not jump bail, which had been granted to him. Whilst on that bail in United Kingdom, as a citizen of UK, Nabi Kanu visited Kenya. And on the 26th of June, 2021, Nabi Kanu was forcibly abducted, like was done to Marudiko on the 9th of Ju July, 1984. He was kidnapped, forcibly abducted, blindfolded, tortured, and brutally, horrifically renditioned back to Nigeria without Nigeria undergoing the due process of extradition law and going by the docking of specialty, mm -hmm. which says you can only be brought back to face the trials on which you have been rendered, not existing counts, okay. and not the uh, existing counts on which you were being tried. So when now the canoe was brought back, they had to again amend the 50 count charge the eight count charge that were against him before he was brutally brought back to nigeria to 50 counts this is to show you that the, the the attorney general does not know the law that they uphold that you know they do not know the law that they represent now having seen what the son is talking about that upon this you know extradition the you know the person is not supposed to answer for the crime that has been there they're supposed to answer for the crime uh you know for the crime that you know which they have you know committed freshly if I understand it correctly, that's what he's saying. They don't even actually know the law, but they are judiciary. They contravene the law that they're supposed to uphold. They are dependent to the executives when they are supposed to be independent so how will they fight the executive when members of the executive is brought into the judiciary for a crime how are they going to make sure that the law takes its course when the judiciary interferes with when the executives interferes with the judiciary and that is the reason why you see legislatures 
doing campaign. Actually, they're not doing campaign. They are doing protest for the chairman of the executive to step down, which is the president. Now, that campaign, instead of passing a motion of no confidence, which is their right as legislatures, passing a motion of no confidence in order to do a vote of no confidence against the president to remove him or to impeach him, they went out there to start protesting. <laughs> Zoo. So, this is to show you that the so-called three arms of, you know, government you have in Nigeria, none of them is working except one, dictatorship. Dictatorship. Let us continue. I went to court, argued against the counts as being not valid. The court struck out eight of the 15 counts, right. remaining seven, for over which we have appealed to the Court of Appeal. I have made this appeal to Mr. President because you notice that being the metaphor for the Igbo struggles, even though it's not physically outside treatment as found by the united nations working group on arbitrary arrest in its report and ruling of 20th of july this year the eagles of the southeast still obey him on any day his matter is coming up by sitting at home this grinds to a halt businesses and the normal way of life what i have done Right. is to appeal to Mr. President to, you know, to use um, extra judicial means, not by force, but by calling upon the Attorney General to use Section 174 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, our time expired because our time was supposed to be two hours. It expired even it kicked it out from YouTube. So there are many things I said. I said uh, that might not actually come through because of our time elapsed. So now we are back on YouTube. So if you are joined back, I believe that it has splitted the video on YouTube to be double. So if you are joining on YouTube again, click the like button or share the video to invite others to join. This is what normally happens when I am leaving it. If I don't pay attention, it will just kick me out. But now it couldn't because uh, I found out the solution to the problem. So it is only on YouTube that it has affected. It might have, you know, divided the video there and make it in separated it into two places. But those that are joining on that YouTube again, a judge money blog Africa, share the video, like the video, subscribe, and everything will continue to do its work by sharing it so that the rest of the people who are watching us will join back. So let us continue. Just like I was saying, there was something I said before it cut out. I was saying that the three arms of government that are in Nigeria, they are not working. The only arms of government that doesn't exist by yet working in Nigeria is dictatorship. And that dictatorship is the arm that is working in Nigeria because every country where there is dictatorship, it means that what happens to in the court, in their judiciary, can be the you know, can will actually be interfered by the president. 
you, you, the president can interfere in the judiciary, can interfere in the legislature. They actually is actually, you know, he makes decision in every area. But now they deceived you and say you have three arms: legislature, judiciary, executive, legislature, and the judiciary. And the three, these three arms are supposed to be independent. They're supposed to be, you know, independent or, you know, not just independent. Everybody will make their own decision. Rigorously independent. Now, in this regard, you saw when the uh, legislature we are protesting to remove the chairman of the executive, which is your president. Instead of passing a motion of no confidence, then there will be a vote to remove or to impeach the president. Or to the, Through that process, the president will choose to resign by himself for him not to be impeached because if he gets impeached, he will not have those immunity as president emeritus. Now, for the sake of that, you see the legislature protesting like me and you. You see people you put in power to represent you, complaining, crying, the way me and you are crying. What does that show you? That it is dictator dictator regime that you have there is nothing like three arms of government every politician that knows their book will know what i am saying or every intellectual that no understand what it means to have legislature judiciary and executive will understand what i am saying now if legislature is actually crippled and they cannot do anything on their own what do you think about the a judiciary? How are you going to try a members of the executive in the judiciary when judiciary is dependent on the executive to work? So that is the message he's sending. Let the judiciary, let the executive. Now, since the judiciary cannot work without you, executive. Now, executive, we have noticed that this ball is in your court. It is not in the court anymore, court of law. Because you are the prosecutor, you are the, you know, you are the complainant, you are prosecutor, you are judge, you are everything, you are judiciary. How do you think that ordinary people will survive in that, in that conundrum? When you, you, you know, when they do put on every effort to, uh, you know, to assuage this issue, this pieces, this insecurity, the judiciary will continue to actually exacerbate it. Not the judiciary, the executive will continue to exacerbate this matter, the insecurity, everything. Now, the question now to the Biafra land, to the politicians. Now, there is a, something I want to, you know, actually make you to understand. Remember when um, Mazen Namdekano was warning me, okay? We can actually go and kill Obibo. You will uh, get presidency in 2023. We can run and kill our people in Obibo. Small Adolf Hitler. Today, now, we is now dancing in and thereby, in and thereby, in and thereby, in and thereby. Because now, you see, the way we are is protesting, fighting back, how many of Ndibo, who missed that opportunity, are actually protesting, fighting back. Because you can see that Mwike is fighting back. Even though he was, he, is, he was used to kill our people, which he can never be forgiven. 
That is the reason why he said there is no sin that goes unpunished. He is protesting and making sure that he get back at Ndotiana PDP. How many of you both aspirants <laughs> that they promise like devil man who is drowning in debt today? His state is drowning in debt because he was proactive to use the money of his state to go and do illegal activities, creating faction in IPOB, yeah, renditioning Mazenam the Kano, among others, instead of using it to service his debt. Today, the presidency, you know, rompers him, or he didn't see anything. Is he protesting? He went in, no act, become quiet. No one is hearing from him again. Now I am asking all of you cowards in the name of politicians in Jafra land. Cowards, all of you are cowards. Oh, George Money Paul, no coward. Oh, if you no cowards. Oh, come on, no, no. That is what all of you are. Cowards. No, come on, no, no. The reason why I call you cowards. Ohanez and cowards. Bunch of cowards. Number one, who no no hope who's the money bu your youth. It's killing your youth. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. I don't know which promises now they are still making on hope who's the man. Or because they put him there because he did not win an election. That he's still loyal to them, that he cannot come down now. That is the reason why good luck say that if you vote a, a, a killer, they will they will kill to get into power, they will continue to kill to stay in power. That is what good luck Jonathan said in our Akwai bomb when he visited Akwai bomb. Now you will now let me start coming back because that is a digression. All this evil politician governors that is working in legislatures, all of you are a bunch of cowards. Your land, ever since Mazen Nam the Kano is placed there, none of you is vocal. This is our own. Nkemon Kemona Zonafia. Release him. Let, let us go home and talk. We will talk to our person. You've been releasing Boko Haram, integrating them even in the army. We didn't complain. Release this man who did not commit any crime. If you were fair to us as in Debo, as in the Biafra, is this man going to rise up to do what he's doing? The answer is no. So release him or there will be no peace here. Because if this is a country, we have... Equal share, just like you do. Hey, this is how to know people who know what they what they want, but not cowards. Bunches of cowards. They will not talk. They will not talk. Rather, the ones who want to do something, they are doing underground. They don't want to be noticed. Bunch of cowards. And yet, they will tell you, "We are one Nigeria. We are one Nigeria." One Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, my foot. One contraption. You are one contraption. You people, I don't know which planet you people hail from. All these politicians. Which planet did you people hail from? Biafran politicians. You are a coward. You are a coward. In capital letter, you are a coward. You only strong when it comes to your youth, ordinary people on the ground. It is like a lion living in a buffalo that will give him more meat and start chasing after cockroach. You people chase after cockroach to kill cockroach. When there is a buffalo to eat, kill cockroach and eat it. When there is a buffalo that you have access to kill and, and consume. That's what you people do. A cowards. Cowards. You kill harmless people. Harmless innocent people. 
but harmful criminals. You cannot even speak. That's how cowardice you people are. Let us continue to listen to our able lawyer. 1999 has altered, as amended, to enter a nolle prosecute for okay. Nambikanu. What does it mean? If I may come in. continue the present counts or charge going against him. And one of those counts, uh, Mr. Michael Zekome, is treasonable felony. Can you really have a political solution uh, to uh, treason charges? I mean, are there any precedences for that in Nigeria, uh, for example? And what really would be the implications if uh, Namdekano is not released, especially when you say UN Group had asked uh, the, the government to release Namdekano? Yeah, the consequences for a country is to turn a country into a pariah nation. If United Nations Organization, the Charter of 1945, to which you are a signatory, you are a charter, you are a citizen of the world by being recognized by the United Nations, and it has given a ruling, and you ignore it, there are usually consequences. Such a country is turned into a pariah nation. When you talk about treason, Section 15 of the Transition Act says Sanction. you can only rendition a person back. Not for accounts that were already going on, but for the matter you think he has done wrong there. Okay. So the United Nations Working Group indicted mm -hmm. the Nigerian government and the Kenyan government for brutally bringing Namdekanu back to Nigeria and keeping him under horrendous treatment. Treason? There are no counts really bordering on treason. The nearer they have is what they call treasonable felony. But we have shown the counts for what they are. Empty, hollow, vain, vacuous. Counts that have no substance, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. That was why we were able to strike out to get eight counts struck out, remaining seven, which we have told the court of appeal to also strike out. If you accuse a person, for example, of making a broadcast, you didn't state where he made the broadcast, whether it was in the spirit world or in the land of the dead mm -hmm. or, in the go or in ghost land. Confirm. And then you are saying that mm -hmm. based on that mm -hmm. voice, which can be simulated that some people demonstrated in Nigeria and burnt houses, some military people were also affected. I hope the government will be able to call about 1 million Nigerians out of Nigeria's 280 million people to come and testify to show what effect they said a broadcast from an unknown destination, contrary to the Federal High Court Act and contrary to decisions by the Supreme Court, that you must take the venue of an offense at the time. They did not state. Would they be able to have up to 1 million Nigerians to come and state? Okay. You made this broadcast. That is why some people broke ribs. The cows themselves. This is exactly where I told you that they have seen, according to their in their experience, they have seen that the case does not hold any water to still be in the court. But there is a special interest which is political and in order to curb that special interest we need to demand for political solution to curb that special interest which is dictatorship interest that's why he has to write to the dictator now united nation is it not um, time you know although if the dictator, he will not care if United Nation is seeing Nigeria as a Palia nation. A nation that does not uphold the rule of law or the human right. Now, it is going to be sanctioned. It, will, it is going to be lightly or lightly sanctioned. But the problem now is that even if Nigeria is sanctioned today, does your dictator care? Because your dictator, they have made enough money. 
that they will use to even sustain. Their children are studying in abroad. If there is a the sanction bring economic instability in the country, the detector does not care because he is equal to the task. Their children continue to graduate from abroad. They snap pictures and showed you. You look at it, some of you will continue to like, but your children has been at home for almost one year now because of ASU strike. You look at it, some of you will start liking. You will find 20,000 likes because uh, Buhari's child he graduated from University of Toronto. Or uh, um, one of the politician's children, they graduated from University of Cambridge. You will see 20,000 likes. Who are those? People whom their children are in ASU strike in the last more than in the last eight months plus <laughs> for you to understand that your problem is very very spiritual <laughs> it is spiritual mental and physical your problem is everywhere but the mental one is the one that is affecting you the most mental problem is the one affecting you the most so if there is a sanction, they don't care. When they don't care about your children in striking, that your children that are not in school, do you think they will care about you eating or not? The economy of Nigeria is in a, in a, in a, in a limbo already. Nigeria, the valuation of Naira is on a tip of a, you know, it is actually like this. Nigeria, Naira, Naira will be devaluated. The inflation rate is on 20 marks. The inflation rate is in 20 marks, 20 point something. Maybe I might be even playing a, a devil advocate here. Maybe it might even must have gone to 21 mark. Dollar rate, according to black market, is 700 and, 700 and something dollar rate. So now, how do you think? If they join it with a, a restriction or sanction, what do you think will be your fate? You will start eating each other's body parts in order to eat food. That will be your fate. Exactly. They will start actually isolating you from the global state. You can no longer have free trade, you know, with anything that is it the man that is holding somebody that he committed reasonable felony when this man come into power the inflation rate was how many was it nine percent or twelve percent or today he doubled it twenty percent twenty Who is supposed to be answering for treasonable felony? Unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is almost is more than the half of the population. Which is more than 50%. No matter how much they underreport it, the algorithm of the crime will show you unemployment rate in Nigeria. The insecurity will show you the unemployment rate in Nigeria. Places where there are employment, do you think people have time to do uh, crime? So, all these things that you are seeing, who deserve a reasonable felony? Somebody who told you that killing terrorists is killing his own people. Who deserve to be answering case of treasonable felon? And this terrorist has been ransacking the whole Nigeria, killing millions. When you look at them, you will ask who deserve a, a treasonable felon? media na maka maka. A reasonable felony, this and that. Useless entities. 
Let us continue. Are ludicrous and ridiculous. Mm. The nearest they would have got is that he imported the transmitter. All right, so you have to case. where Obulu yeah. is Suzo, Anambra State, which the Federal High Court in Abuja mm -hmm. has no jurisdiction over. So I am telling President has Buhari no that jurisdiction. as the president of Nigeria, he can look at the larger picture, not at the smaller picture. He must see the cup as half full. Are not not as empty. half empty. All right. You must see now the canoe uh, 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 from the binoculars mm. that is being persecuted. Okay. His political persecution as found out by the United Nations Working Group on uh, Arbitrary Detention. Okay, senior advocate, I, I mean, you've written this to the president. I wonder if there's been any response. And i also like to ask you, because the president has been asked this question uh, only recently in an interview, and he said... Uh, he would not interfere with the judiciary. Kanu's case is in the court. Let the judiciary <laughs> take its course. Let the, the court is it not laughable? take its course. That is and you believe but I also it. want to ask you, as a senior advocate of Nigeria, is it that you do not have faith in the system, in the judiciary, for this case to run its course? Now, the same journalist is now explaining exactly what my claims are is it that you do not have faith in the judiciary you see the judiciary is in the is is not you know working independently there is so many interference now let's continue listen attentively to start with, the case itself is political. When I see political cases, I know them. I practice law for 41 years. When the president says we not interfere with the judiciary, no one is saying he should interfere with the judiciary. I do not expect Mr. President to go before the judge and say, hello, I want you to withdraw this case. I have struck it out. It doesn't go that way. No, will I ever advocate for that? What I do say is that the president is the appointer of, uh, of Abubakar Malami, the attorney, a senior advocate of Nigeria, the attorney general of the federation. Have you not seen mm -hmm. in the last seven years many political cases, many cases involving federal government appointees that were discontinued with a nolle prosecu? That is not interference with the judiciary. It is a right, a constitutional right given to the attorney general of the federation under section 175 of the constitution that you can undertake you can continue you can discontinue you can withdraw any charge that is already going on whether initially filed by you or by any other person or authority but the attorney general cannot do this by himself because he's an appointee of mr president because the tail cannot wag the dog because the messenger cannot become greater than the person who sent him a message. That is why I'm saying the president as commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria and as the president using his executive power under uh, section 5 of the constitution does have the power to instruct the attorney general to say, look, it is more politically, socially, culturally, economically productive to have Nam the Kanu released immediately and unconditionally from detention so that there will be peace again in the restless southeast part of Nigeria. Is southeast not a part of Nigeria? Have you not seen that each day? In exactly. They don't want peace to be in the restless southeast part of Nigeria. They don't want peace. Yet they continue to tell you one. We are one. We are one. The unity of this zoo is non-negotiable. People like a coward to Joy Bokwe. The unity of this zoo is non-negotiable. You will find other cowards. The unity of this zoo is not negotiable. You will look at these people. Them sometimes on a man and a kata these people or them can left on a screen walu walu go do solo tap machenda or no. On a rim consin na screen eben na ali puta walu solo tap machia fun because funny kwalo. Funny, we are on a bogina your bomb marrow that you don't even know what to do. 
when you understand the you know the level of their you know cowardice or the level of their gullibility selfishness self-hate that is the reason why they will see what they will do to help themselves they cannot do those to help themselves let's finalize now the canoe is going to court or when they believe that it's going to court that the entire place is locked down and that has been going on for over three four five years is mr president is, can you not see southeast as part and parcel of nigeria and discover that the best solution to this is political solution that is not interference with the judiciary mm -hmm. it is by simply instructing the attorney general of the federation who will do what the law says he can do under section 174 of the constitution i assure you my dear sister that is not interference with the judicial function rather it is in compliance with our judicial tenets yeah but there are others who would say that this might just set the wrong presents and wrong signals to those who may want to take up arms against uh the country in the name of uh ethnic or regional agitations and i'd also like you to uh address in the event that president muhammad buhari does not listen to uh, your plea apart from the the uh, indictment by the u.n council what else can the u.n council do to intervene in this matter well the u.n has various sanctions that can be imposed on a country that willfully defies any of its agencies particularly on matters having to do with human rights of the citizens the u.n in this case through his agency has found that Ina Bikanu was brutally tortured. That even we, his lawyers, are not giving access to him. And that we are even being dehumanized. Do you know when we visit SSS, everything, every single thing, up to pen, up to coins, up to, up to, up to, up to uh, Naira notes, up to handkerchief, up to your shoes, have to be removed before you can see Ina Bikanu. How do I confer with my client? Without okay. file, without books, without papers for us to have ideas. That is not a, a fair trial. The same people who accused him, who got him renditioned back to Nigeria forcefully, under torturous circumstances, blindfolded on the 26th of June 2021, are the same people who investigated him, who accused him, who are prosecuting him, and they are the people who are also his custodians keeping him. Under okay. solitary confinement, with 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 mm -hmm. his health failing on a daily basis, his health failing. Now the canoe's health is failing on a daily basis, and we have begged, let an independent doctor look at him, particularly having regard uh, with his potassium content, the potassium content in his body, and he's draining away, and he is kept in solitary confinement. It can only be open on certain days of the week just to see the sun. Don't you know vitamin D that you must have the sun? Now, if the government does not do that, that means the government is saying, telling the uh, United Nations, go to hell. Although we are a part and parcel of you, we can do anything we want to do and ignore you. And there are consequences. Many of them, legal, constitutional, international conventional and including a country being turned into a paria in a way that when they when you speak they will say oh don't mind them they are not they, do, they are not rule of law compliant that is not the kind of image uh, we want i know uh, president buhari i'm sure and i urge him not to leave behind such a legacy didn't he just tell the hunger last week when he was here that he wants to leave behind a you're gonna try you. adherence to rule of law and a free and fair election and electoral process this is one such time that mr president is being called upon to walk the talk that you just said last week by releasing in nambicano unconditionally fought with immediately and it caused the government no harm go nambicano will simply come go back to his village the entire Igbo people will come out jubilating everybody will be happy can't you see that the tension is too much we can instead of self-immolating 
self-destructing. We can self-build. We can build confidence. We can stretch the hand, our hands across the Niger, across the Benue. We can incorporate everybody. We can have rapprochement. We can bring about peace, genuine peace that leads to egalitarian, egalitarianism. Peace, not peace of the graveyard or symmetry. But yeah, peace okay. that is well, to with mutual point, respect. Yeah, so that, that point has been. We also feel they are part and parcel yeah, of this country. That point has been well. And it's the same it has been well made. If, for if I may just. Uh, well, day ago, yes. Who was also arrested. Right. I've written yes. severally on it that he should also. Because his, 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 his determination for Oduduwa Republic is not a crime known international law. And that's the, the point I'm trying to make. That's the point I'm trying to raise with you. If it were not signaled to uh, non-state actors and other ethnic agitators that they can actually go ahead in the event that President Muhammadu Buhari really uh, Excuse me. responds to your appeal. Excuse me. Yeah. You and I, we are living in Nigeria. You are talking about... You are talking about harmless people who, who are not armed. Are you not aware that in this country, are you not aware that in this country, some Boko Haram, some people accused of Boko Haram were released and traded for others by way of a, a quick pro quo? They mm -hmm. said, okay, release some of us. Then we will release some, uh, some of your detained citizens. Are you not aware that that has gone on in this country? So what is, what is the bad precedent of saying a non-violent person should be released from detention, from illegal detention? A detention that the United Nations have been found to be illegal and to be unconstitutional and to be torturous. I mm -hmm. do not see anything that is setting any bad precedent there in a situation where, where as a matter of fact, some Boko Haram and, and armed bandits are being released in exchange for some of their members where kidnappers are demanding from parents of children they have kidnapped to buy tarodo, tatashe, tomatoes, vegetable oil, palm oil, and, um, uba, to buy zoo, to buy rice, zoo, zoo, yams, for them to feed their children so as to keep them alive, to enable the parents pay ransom for them. What is the long precedent here that we are just saying release find a political solution by going through the tenets and the provisions of the law i do not personally see anything wrong with that at all and there's none that i know of and i cannot see it leading to any floodgate or any resurgence by other people coming to say um, uh, criminals coming to say oh, you must also give me reprieve it, it it does not happen that way how many now the canoes do you have in nigeria and how many Sunday bowls do you have in Nigeria? These are people who have carried the specter of their people on their heads, and they have become a metaphor for their self-determination struggle. Right, Mr. Mike Ezokame, a senior advocate of Nigeria and lawyer to Namdi Kanu, the IPOB, prescribed IPOB leader. Thank you so much for joining us on this. Uh, um, Paggy proscribed like pub because Boko Haram proscribed like pub. So, great dear friends all over the world, this is it. This is it. This is how it is happening. And now, in conclusion, when we talk about this political solution, you will now get it and understand that. Political solution is not only when somebody, it's not when you, you know, only when you say, let your governors, let your senators go and negotiate. It is not for your senators and your governors to go and negotiate your independence. No, that is not political solution. Political solution has many branches, depending on the one that you are seeking for at that point in time. Like now, the political solution that is being talked about is because the judiciary now is helpless in this matter, that they cannot rule this case because there is a force 
that is interfering in this case, which is political force, which is um, executive force. An executive happens to be the leader of this politics. Now, you have to now call on the executive to tell the executive, we know that you are the one holding this case. Therefore, don't fight to win a war and lose the peace because they know what is to come. They know what is to come. Don't fight to win the war and lose the peace. Because that peace, you know, is something they have lost. The action is something that is going to emanate when they believe that they are winning the war. So, release Mazen Namdekan. He has committed no crime known to law. Mazen Namdekan has committed no crime known to law. Release him. Let him come out. If you can release Boko Haram terrorist, trade in Boko Haram terrorist with some people's people families in Nigeria. And you see Mazen Namdekano, you see him as somebody who is dangerous, but you haven't seen Boko Haram that is killing and ransacking villages in the northern part of Nigeria, which the media has grown fatigue. It has grown, you know, they've grown, grown fatigue that they can no longer report what is happening in the northern region of Nigeria, how the terrorist is destroying that area, how they are killing people, kidnapping every day. They have been, they are shot. In fact, I believe that it is actually the same executive who ordered the media to stop reporting them. <laughs> this is how dangerous they are. They have ordered the media, stop reporting things that is happening in the north. Because we, we want to present it as if this man in Asorov is going to leave a legacy that there was a peace when he left so that when uh, if eventually this one called the obedient when he go there they would say there was peace when uh, um, uh, this uh, cabal in Asorok left so the insecurity now is emanating because of the Igbo man so that is the reason why they have you know cautioned the media not to report what is happening and that is the reason have you supposed to actually ask yourself why is it that you are no longer hearing about them does it mean they stop overnight the answer is no it will never just stop it is up to the media to show you because when the media is showing you you will know how to go to the place of safety. But which is going to actually exacerbate the problem of the, the, the terrorist, which is exactly what they don't want. They want the terrorists to continue to work strong because people in power are the ones sponsoring them they are the ones giving them ladder to climb. So we are calling on these Igbo politicians to act. Demand. You don't need to. You don't need to actually ask. Demand for the release of Mazen Namdekanu because you people are part of those holding him. You people are part of those holding him. All these things you see happening to uh, Ifanyo by escaping death. If Mazen Namdekano was with us, 
All those nonsense will not be happening. So, since you people like evil, evil will continue to come to you people because they are now using the, for the sake of they are holding Mazen Namdekan, building army of destruction through Simon Epa and Asare Dokubo. That is the opportunity they have utilized. When they are killing you politicians, they will say they are IPOB. That is exactly, does it mean who, does, does it matter who they are if they kill you? Does not matter. It doesn't matter whom they are. And that is exactly what you people groomed. You people groomed it. And if you know to know that, we will continue to come to you people until you do the needful. Because those criminals that are masking themselves, killing your youth, innocent youth, sometimes kill you, attack you, politicians, very soon it will be, be, become a full-blown attack on you people. Don't forget, the children of Israel, they decided to embrace the enemy instead of embracing the God that will lead them to freedom. That is the image, the craving image they want to embrace because Moses was not present. Because Moses went to the mountain. Don't forget. Let it dwell with you. Meditate upon it. And you ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Or am I doing the wrong thing? Am I jeopardizing the freedom? Or am I saving the freedom? Because you might be doing it, believing that you are doing it to hurt judge money or to hurt Chike Dozier or to hurt DOS as a whole, or you might be doing it that you want to, you know, prove a point. But I can assure you, you are doing it because you want to destroy yourself and you don't want freedom. And as the more you are doing it, the more you are exacerbating your own problem. The more you are creating all this charade, trying to instigate, trying to support the craving image, which is Simon Epa, that you people have made for yourself. Because you can no longer see Moses. The more you are doing it, the more your people will be suffering. You are exacerbating the problem of your people on the ground. You are killing the people that you are supposed to be saving. Using somebody whom you don't know, his bloodline, who lied to you, he come from Abony State because he grew up there without you knowing that he is part and parcel of Asare Dokubo's activities. But it is time for you to come out. Leave this craving image and focus on your God and the choosing and the choice he made for you, which is Mazen Namzekano. And the guideline that choice put in place and the principles, the structures he put in place. Follow it, you will never go wrong. Let us remind Nigeria one thing. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay informed.